on the 13th of September. Uhuru Kenyatta handed over the reins of power to his former deputy, William Arapruto. The shift included the change in security personnel and, of course, the official motorcade. the most complex convoy in Kenya. The men now on Ruto's motorcade had one objective going forward. Ensure the safety of the commander-in-chief of the Kenya Defense Forces. But how does this motorcade compare with those of the most powerful men in the world? Let's have a look. On this day, Kenyans were treated to a show by men and women who ensure the country's most powerful man travels safe. Sometime before noon, on the day of inauguration, President Uhuru Kenyatta hopped into the waiting Mercedes S600 Pullman Guard. The president's car would then join a motorcade that had already taken position. And as he left the house on the hill, the convoy moved in a spearhead formation. It's called so because it takes the shape of a spear and is very essential for easy maneuvering and guarantee should the president find himself under attack. Security threats facing Kenya's head of state are not astronomical when compared to men controlling powerful nations and big budgets like the President of the United States of America or Russia. But all the same, nothing is left to chance given the terror threat Al-Shabaab poses to Kenya. When the country's leader is on the move, he must be surrounded by Kenya's elite forces and must move in the most secure vehicle the state can offer. His car is always at the heart of the formation, surrounded by outriders or sweepers. They are in charge of clearing the way for the motorcade, but they also form a protection ring around the head of state. They are literally the first line of defense should the president come under attack. For top economies, security threats their leaders face are huge and so is the need for heightened security around them. Countries like the United States, Russia, China and the United Kingdom invest heavily in the hardware and personnel with the aim of eliminating or cutting down on potential threats around presidents or prime ministers. Kenya does not have a distinct presidential car, but officers on the presidential motorcade usually have a code name for the head of state. On the day of the inauguration, for example, President Kenyatta used the Mercedes S600 Pullman Guard as he drove to Moy Sports Complex, Kasarani, to hand over power to his successor. President William Ruto, who used the Toyota Land Cruiser V8 as he rode to State House after taking over power. The President of the United States is the most powerful man on the planet. And the funeral and burial of Queen Elizabeth II of England 
proved so, while most global leaders were bust to the Westminster Abbey for the funeral, Joe Biden was ensconced in the beast. The presidential limousine. This car is specially armored and is also equipped to resist gas attacks. According to various publications, it even carries packs of the president's blood type in case of medical emergency. This car is armored to resist explosives. The armor includes 8-inch plates capable of stopping an improvised explosive device or IED and 5-inch multi-layer windows that make the doors as heavy as those of a 757 jet. When closed, they form a 100% seal to protect the occupants in the event of a chemical attack. The car is sealed against by chemical attacks. The fuel tank is armor-plated and filled with a special foam that prevents it from exploding even after a direct hit. Normally, the motorcade of the US president is made up of between 40 and 50 cars and over 100 personnel. To secure the US president, the Secret Service invests in creating confusion. Alongside the beast are two identical cars. They appear like the president's car in every mannerism and share the same number plate as the beast. The two limos are decoys. The beast and its replica are transported by cargo plane to join the president wherever he travels around the globe. The car former President Uhuru Kenyatta traveled in during his last day in office is a Mercedes stretch limousine that meets the highest standards of security and can withstand even grenade attacks. It's a Mercedes-Benz S600 W221 Pullman Guard. Its thick armoring makes it significantly heavier than a regular version of the Pullman. The top-notch safety features include a rare surveillance camera to prevent an ambush from behind. On the Kenyan motorcade, two cars move on either side of the president's car. In the Huru case, there were these two Mercedes-Benz E-Class, while Ruto's motorcade had these two Toyota Land Cruiser Prados. While these cars are not decoys, they ensure security around the president. For the U.S. presidential motorcade, Secret Service agents who have specialized training in evasive driving techniques, including a JTAN, pilot the vehicle. The JTAN, taught at the Secret Service training facility outside Washington, D.C., can turn the limo 180 degrees in a matter of seconds to escape trouble. The beast is not the only high-tech vehicle in the presidential fleet. Among the motorcade is the president's own communication antenna, a mobile cell phone tower strapped to the top of a car in his motorcade. Like in the US, every car on Kenya's presidential motorcade has a role to play. The difference is the level of sophistication and the security features and layers employed. While it's easy to tell which car the president of Kenya is in, it is not an easy task to spot the beast. Kenya's head of state is always in the car that bears his standard. But one particular similarity is the presence of signal jammers on the motorcades. On the Kenyan presidential motorcade is a Toyota Land Cruiser jammer. It jams any remote explodes that might be en route using antennas that send out a huge range of radio frequencies that block any bomb activation signal. Ahead of the formation is the lead car. It is the actual brain of the operation. This car is the main guide and decision maker for the total commute. It even acts as a sort of buffer between what is ahead and the president's car. 
My name is Enoxicoli and this is the Kenyan historian. <laughs>